And the other thing that we're going to do as well is because we're trying to make this old school sort of style Pong game, which is the similar style to Ping Pong Pinball X, which should be on iPhone hopefully in the next couple of days, by the way. And so what we're going to do is make click on the main camera down here in the hierarchy, left click on the background, and then we're going to drag this down to black. And that's all. If there's no geometry in the... If, so here's the camera. If we have no geometry in the way um, between the camera and the background, the background will just be rendered black. Okay, so you'll just see this black. If we had geometry covering that, or if we had a sky box like a texture, then you wouldn't see this black. But for the sakes of this, since we're making a pretty simple game, we can go with black and that's fine. Okay? So... Let me. I'm just going to check where I'm. So I'm going through all the the points for you guys, and I'm not missing anything out. So it should be easy to follow. So we've made the ambient, uh, the ambient, tech, the ambient light to white. We've changed the camera background. We've dragged the materials onto all the walls, which is where we, which we did over here. We've got the material, and we dragged it over. So okay, and I just want to illustrate one point here, guys, as well, is that I just changed the the render settings to white. The ambient the ambient light into white, okay? But what we had is the, the this white square is already white as well, okay? So there's no difference, why did I bother? What you can do is if you wanted to change the color of these walls, you can actually have a different texture or a different texture color. So if I just double click on the white square, that'll open up Photoshop and I'm just gonna apply a different color just to illustrate this point. And so you guys can experiment. Uh, you guys don't have to follow along exactly all the colors and points that I'm doing here. This is sort of an open one where you can play around with the particle systems and the textures and the colors and so on. So I'm just going to fill this up with the blue. I'm going to save it. And I'm just going to click back into Unity. And there you go. It's a different color. So you can see this white square has now become a blue square. Blue square. We could rename it. Um, you know, call it whatever you want. You could make these brick walls, anything that you want to do uh, in your game to make it look a little bit more pretty or however you want however you want to change it so but just, just to illustrate guys but just for the sakes of this one um, I'm just gonna play around with this actually I'm gonna keep this as blue even though it says white square don't worry about that so much guys it's, it's basically how, however you want to name it and whatever you want to call it so this is pretty flexible this lesson okay so the next thing that we're gonna do and yeah so we're gonna make the background particle system and so this is, again, something that you guys can play around with and, and adjust the settings as you like to make it look prettier, however you want to do it, okay? So if I go to Game Object Create Other Particle System, click on that, you can see here that's a, appeared in the hierarchy, which is great. And if, I just, if I'm holding down Alt, left click, and then moving left and right, you can actually see that appear in the game world. And I'm just taking it at a different angle so you can see. And if I middle scroll with my mouse, I zoom out. And I'm just going to hold this and just drag it back a little bit. That's because the ball is going to go here in this middle part. And I want the these background particles to be behind the ball so that they don't cover it up or, or get in the way or anything like that. And I'm just going to take it back a little bit more just so it's behind the score. I'm going to click F to zoom in on that. And I'm going to go and click on this front axis here so that it, it shows me the... the front view as it would appear in the game, which is always useful. So first thing is, so I'm, just, I'm going to adjust some of these settings here and play around with this. I didn't write down all the numbers as, as I was building this, preparing for this video before, which is totally fine. Like I say, the particle settings are more um, just however you guys want to put it together and, and how you want to make it look pretty yourselves. So, you know, I encourage you to definitely like play around with these and, and play around with the different forces and the different colors and all of these things that you can do. So, um, and I think in once, once I do get hold of Unity 3.5, then I'm going to show you some particle examples in that as well. So the first thing is, I'm going to click on the min size and the max size. Um, so I think actually, sorry, just to back up a second before I do that, I had just to explain the particle system here. Um, this is already built into Unity and is already created. Particles basically, uh, in this, what we have here is that they're, like I said before, they're mainly used for effects, and in this case, the particles will not interact with anything in the scene. So what we're getting here is basically just a bunch of particles. When we say particles, we're just talking about a small texture that is 
put into the game world, that is rendered into the game world. So, for example, we might have rain, and a ra rain would be uh, a particle effect as well. And it'd just be a single sort of ball of, of, uh, of blue, or whatever we, color we want to use, and then stretched out. And then those particles generally, they might interact with the world, but generally in the games that we do at Cobalt Play, we don't actually have the particles interact with the walls or the ball or anything like this. They're just used to make, make it look pretty. So when we're saying particle system or particle effect, we're just talking about a small texture like a ball, which is basically used to make different kind of effects like stretching rain or uh, lines or stars or whatever whatever we want to do with those, okay? Fire, explosions and so on. So, okay, so let's click on min, minimum size and I'm going to change that to 1. I'm going to click enter, I'm going to change the maximum size to 1, which is the actual size of the rendered particle, like you can see here, it's got a lot bigger all of a sudden, okay? The minimum energy and the maximum energy is the time that the, each particle lives, and in this in this case, it's three seconds. The minimum minimum emission and maximum emission I can say that is the number of particles that are rendered per second. I think I think it's per second. Sorry, I'm not 100% sure on that one. And right now we're rendering 50 per second, which is quite large. That might be a little bit too much if we get this scene complicated, but it should still run pretty smooth and. So what I want to do is the first thing is I want to spread out these particles because as you can see right now they're just rendering in one location, all right? And the ellipsoid here is basically this is how we would change this. So if I go to X and change this to say five, there you go. You can see it's now spread out on this like horizon now, which is kind of cool. I think that looks like I don't know. It looks like the Milky Way, the center of the galaxy um, from Star Trek Five. Yeah, I'm a bit of a Trekkie. If any Star Trek fans know what I'm talking about, then great. <laughs> Most people probably don't know. All right. So I've also changed the Y direction to five as well, and as you can see, that's that's increased the the particle emission in in, in the X and the Y. So the particles will emit at any point inside of this five by five square. And the Z, I'm just going to make that zero because we don't need it to come anywhere near forward to the camera or behind the camera. We can have that on a flat plane and just have it on the X and the Y, uh, each particle rendering on the X and the Y plane axis, sorry. All right, so that looks kind of interesting, but I actually had a different sort of particle effect in mind, sort of small shards of, of energy sort of zipping off into different places. So what I'm going to do is go up to here, this random velocity, and um, expand this out if you haven't done already. And I'm going to click on, say, 8. Now, as you can see, what that's done is it's made them have a random starting velocity, and they'll just go left and right or at different velocities because it's random. If I just zoom out here a little bit, you can see that. And then I'm going to click on Y, click on 8 as well. And that was kind of interesting, you know. I mean, that to me looks like a little bit like, I don't know, like cells in a body or something like that, or, you know, maybe some subatomic particles or something. It looks kind of interesting. Um, you know, and you guys can keep that if you like it for sure, you know, have a play around. So but what I want to do in this case is I'm going to go down to the particle renderer section, stretch particles, click on that. I'm going to go down to stretched. And so right now this kind of looks a little bit like I don't know, some kind of infestation or, or some kind of like parasite in the blood, which which isn't, it's kind of interesting, but it's not really what I'm after. I'm also just going to reduce this down to 30. So minimum emission, I'm going to click on 30 and also 30 as well. Usually it runs a lot smoother without the recording software going on. So that's part of the reason I'm doing this. And the other thing that I want to do is I'm going to go down to the length scale here and I'm going to left click on if I click on length scale itself and then drag it by holding the left you can see what happens there it gets all spread out which is looking cool it starts to look pretty cool when you do this um actually it kind of looks that reminds me of the movie Poltergeist for some reason I don't know why I think I saw some kind of effect in Poltergeist that looks a little like that Hmm, I don't know, it's been a long time since I saw that movie. 
Great movie, though. Really, really excellent movie. So, anyway. So, the minimum size, I think I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So, I'm going to go 0 0.5. And now you can see we've got these shards of sort of different, um, different sizes and as they're spawning. And, actually, I'm going to keep these as 0 0.5 as well. Mm. That's a little bit... I don't know, it might, be, it, might, it might need a little bit more size in there because it seems like there's too much black. Okay. I think, um, actually, let me just go down to run. I see, I'm just playing around with the settings here, guys, and, and you know, this is, this is, um, you know, uh, this is how it usually happens, but that's, that's pretty cool. Um, that effects that we've got there. So I'm just going to leave that for a second and see how this goes. You know, I'm just going to play around and then. So the other cool part of the particle uh, system that is built into Unity is you can play around with the color over time. So this is basically this one, two, three, four, five here shows the the start color and the end color. In this case, we've got a three second particle, and this is the start color and this is the end color. So I'm going to just have a play around and see what we can do with some purples and maybe have that fade to a blue effect and I'm just clicking on the the white area here and I'm just changing the color okay let's make that blue I think uh, I did I think I did these set of colors before you know when I was when I was just preparing the video so that was kind of interesting that kind of reminds me, I've got Star Trek on the brain, that reminds me of like uh, Star Trek the motion picture, which was the first movie, the Vija, the Vija uh, sort of space anomaly that comes to destroy Earth, and they had a lot of particle effects in that movie, and, and it was like really cutting edge at the time, so I'm just gonna, yeah, it's kind of interesting, we've still got some purple, Back there. I mean, let's try some blue and green. I actually played around with blue and green before, and uh, that looked kind of cool. So, I feel like I should be playing some kind of uh, sci fi music whilst I'm doing this. Okay. Okay, that should, I think that's okay. Um, what you'll notice as well, guys, is because we're actually, um, uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I was going to say something then, but it's not true, so <laughs> please just scrap that, that thing that I was about to say, just ignore it, because it's fine. And uh, so if I click on play right now, and we're going to see these all in action. All right, okay. So that's, that looks okay. I think it might be better having the, the random X going on as well. So I'm just going to click on particle system here. And I'm going to click on the random velocity X and tap, type 8. Click enter. Okay, that looks okay. 